how to assign one structure variable to another structure variable now if i have two integers in x and y how do i assign the value in x to, x, uh, to uh, the value in x to y we just write y equal to x <coughs> right so similarly let's let's start with let's first write our struct right so we have this point structure and let's create two variables of this type and i'm going to assign and finally i'll write y equal to x so what happens here a struct point variable x and y are created and x dot a is assigned to 20 x dot b to 30 but the final statement y equal to x that's the most crucial thing that's what uh, we were trying to do in this case we have copied the entire contents of x into y so this is exactly like how we will assign one uh, uh, one built in data type a, a variable of a built in data type to another uh, uh, an int to an uh, an integer variable to an integer variable or a character variable to a character variable this is exactly like how we we, we would have done okay but there is a small trap here which is very crucial that you understand that trap because if you don't know that it's you're, you're going to go into that you're going to fall into a trap somewhere sometime in your while you do your program write some program you will fall into that trap without realizing what is the issue so that so we want to cover that trap in the rest of this lecture okay <clears throat> so i'm going to change the, so for this example this is going to work fine there is no problem okay um, but let's look at a different example now okay the next example is that what we are interested in is the following consider a, a student data type okay a structure is called student and it have two things a name and a roll number okay so character star name and integer roll number so an integer roll number and <coughs> and the name is now a pointer to a character so that means when you if you want to allocate name you will have to first dynamically allocate memory and then assign and then store the value of uh, and then store the name inside it that is the the array has to be dynamically created and the value stored inside it okay so i create two student types st1 st2 okay so two variables st1 and st2 <coughs> and i'm going to ask the user to input the name and the roll number so that is using scanf i'm going to take from the user the name and roll number and but before i take the name i have to allocate memory for name so let's allocate some 50 bytes for the name so i'm going to allocate right i allocated 50 bytes for name next thing i want to do is i want to allocate ah sorry the next thing is that i take from the user uh i using scanf i read from the user the name so i just use scanf so 
Similarly, I, I will have also have to read the roll number. Okay, now the name and the roll number has been taken from the user. Finally, I'm going to, okay. So first let's do the following. Let's see how <coughs> all these things are reflected in the uh, memory of the computer, right? First, when we created ST1, what happens? It's going to create memory for storing this information. A character star name <coughs> and a roll number integer. Next statement is the machine allocates 50 bytes and that address to the first location of that is now copied into str1.name. Okay, so let's say uh, the machine. Right, so the machine allocates this much memory, 50 bytes, and let's say the first byte is at address 973. Okay, let's say that's the first uh, address of the first byte. What will happen since we assign that to str1.name? That's going to be stored here. Right, so I'm going to drop this off. And I'm going to write that means this is going to point to this location <coughs> right okay next is scanf what does the scanf do now scanf now to scanf we passed on this address 973 is passed to scanf function scanf function takes that address and it reads uh, from the user a name let's say the name is Simran so I write S I M right this name is now taken from the from the user and it's now stored at this location the next is you take a roll number the, from the user and it's stored here Let's say the roll number is good. This much is clear, right? So, and we have now reached here. Now comes the next important statement of I'm going to write. What happens when I do this? I write str2 equal to str1. Okay, so for str2 also, the machine is going to allocate the same amount of memory, but at a different location. So let's draw that first. So this is for str1, right? And for similarly for str2, we are going to see again. Right. <coughs> this is allocated by the machine, this much memory. And now when you have str2 equal to str1, what happens? Clearly, so first the, the let's let's finish the easier thing. So the easier thing to understand is that the roll number is copied exactly like what is in str1. So roll number gets copied here as uh, 
okay now what about simran the name simran <coughs> okay so in this case what happens is the following that the machine is going to copy this number 973 here that is this address is copied exactly like exactly into this memory location so that means this point this pointer is also going to look at this address which means that if i write that is the first character i change from s to t what will happen is here it gets changed therefore if if you try to access that location by writing str1.name what do you see there what do you see at this location if you try to print this you will see this is this is that le the letter t right because s got changed to t here at this memory location <clears throat> so in this case only the address is copied the this block of memory which was allocated this array is not copied okay so this kind of copying is called as shallow copy so let me write that so this is called as which means is that only the top layer of information is copied that's why it's called shallow it's not deep copy so uh, the, along with it there is another copy called as deep copy but this allocation is shallow this copy is shallow copy where <coughs> the uh, only the array address gets copied and not the the entire array does not get copied okay is it clear okay uh, so this is something you need to keep in mind that uh, it's a shallow copy which happens when you write str2 equal to str1 or similar things when you use pointers and therefore if you change a value in one location you have to change the value in, i mean you should keep in mind that the value gets changed if you access from the other location also secondly you also have to keep track of the fact that this this pointer is now copied at multiple locations and therefore when you want to free that memory it's a headache you need to keep track of the fact that this has been copied etc and you should be careful not the, not to free that memory when that address is now copied to some other structure and it might be used later right so this is something you need to uh, you, uh, as a programmer you will have to ensure that you don't free memory which might be used later i'm going to slightly change this and i'm basically remove this pointer and i make i allocate so it's a name is an array now of 50 characters so basically now the memory is statically allocated and therefore i don't want this line to allocate memory okay so in this case how is this memory allocated for str1 so clearly it's it's not a pointer here what we want here is in this case you will be having Fifty characters, and then an integer, which is the roll number, right? So this is the last four bytes will be the roll number, 
I'm assuming an integer takes four bytes. Last four bytes will be an integer and the first 50 uh, bytes will be for the character. This is my str1. So the machine will be allocating 54 bytes for, for this structure. Earlier the machine allocated a pointer which is a 4 bytes and the roll number integer 4 bytes. So in the previous uh, definition the machine allocated 8 bytes. Now the machine allocates 54 bytes in this new definition. So now we have str1, scanf happens and exactly same as earlier. Let's say the name remains the same. And the roll number also remains the same. Right. <clears throat> now, what happens when you have str2 equal to str1? So, again, the how does the memory for str2 look like? The memory will be the same. 54 bytes again should be allocated. Right. So this is for str2. So again 54 bytes for str2. What happens when it copies? When, when you have str2 str equal to str1, what will happen now in this case is that this entire array gets copied here along with the roll number. Right? So in this, so that is, this becomes okay. So both the roll number and this array values get copied. If I write str2 dot name, I change the first letter here, the zeroth index from that is s to t. This becomes t. This does not affect this array. So str1 is not affected now in this case. Okay. This is the difference with the previous situation. When we use the pointer, a change here will be will become a change in the in here. So this is a crucial difference and this from a user perspective this becomes a deep copy <clears throat> because in this case the user knows that this is a full copy of our my data which has been copied fully here so this is the so earlier we saw a shallow copy because only the top level gets copied not the not the depth where the pointers reach those things are not copied right <coughs> thank you